An Alabama police detective is recovering tonight after being bitten and uh, beaten and uh, pistol whipped. He was left unconscious. Uh, he was performing a routine traffic stop, we're told. A police union representative says the detective didn't shoot, nor did he fight to defend himself because the officer was afraid of uh, being involved in another media escapade, saying, quote, he hesitated simply because of what's going on in our society right now. We have officers walking on eggshells because of how they're scrutinized in the media. We should be thanking the good Lord because he could be dead right now. The suspect, Denard Cunningham, is in custody. He faces charges of attempted murder. Joining us tonight, former NYPD detective, Fox News contributor, Bo Deedle. Bo, good to have you with us. Criminal defense attorney, Deborah Blum. Good to have you with us. Thank you. Deborah, let's begin with Hello. you. I mean, we've... We have got a campaign in this country, whether we recognize it or not, as many do not. It's a campaign against law enforcement, and it's led in large measure by an administration uh, that, that has chosen to carry out that campaign. What in the world are we going to do? How can we reverse the attitude that exists in some communities in cities across the country? Well, I think when we talk about this issue, we're looking at specific communities. And what we really need to focus on is that those people living there have unequal circumstances. And they're not given incentives to get out of those unequal circumstances. I'm not saying that it's okay to pistol whip a police officer or that police should fear being able to do their job. That's very sad. Mm -hmm. But we have to address the State of sad the is, Union. Wouldn't you say it's unacceptable to tolerate, period? It's completely unacceptable to tolerate, period. I agree with that. But at the same time, we need to look at why these people are in these circumstances. Mm -hmm. And it's because we don't incentivize working enough. We well, don't... I, I, want to, I want to turn to Bo and get his view. But, Deborah, I've got to ask you this. Why would this president who is our first African-American president. And we're talking about in Baltimore, a, a city that has been run by Democrats for a half century, that has an African-American power structure, African-American police uh, officials, top officials. How in the world is it that this president has done nothing positive to reverse what is what you're describing. Well, I think we have a big bureaucratic mess. So no, 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 no. We, we, we that, that was we had a big bureaucratic mess before. We'll have one later. Why, in your judgment, if this is the case, this president has not responded? rather than carry out a campaign against law enforcement. I do think that the president needs to make a strong message that harming police officers is not acceptable. Here, the NYPD, two yeah. of them were innocently shot for doing nothing wrong. You can't have a society where right. we allow this to occur. Well, I mean, you know, as a former policeman, uh, and we've talked about this issue, this president just does not step up for law enforcement, no, nor no, has he stepped up for that matter. For the communities that one would think he would be eager to be a positive role model and to provide positive support. The only time this president speaks out is when the cops do something. Whenever he speaks out, all he does is divide this country. We all know what happened to Ferguson. We know that Brown's DNA was on the cop, on the car. This hands-up action was not there. Now you have a demonstration again. My problem is what happened in Baltimore to all the good people, those African-American communities that were burnt down and looted. They could identify the people that were doing. Why weren't they arrested there? Why weren't they arrested in Ferguson? They were committing felonies. Now you got New York City. You got the cops walking around. Nobody's taking the guns on the street. We have less gun arrests than ever before. Stop and frisk is down. All right, we had an incident that happened in Carolina. They publicized that cop shooting that guy in the back, which was totally wrong. But every cop out there today doesn't go out there saying, oh, let me go shoot an innocent person. The cops are our only line defense between anarchy. And that's what exactly what happened. Cops are not, I talk to them all the time. I was in Detroit, Dallas, and New York in the last couple of weeks. Every cop I talk to does not want to get involved because of what's going on. And every time there's an incident, they, they use a magnifying glass on the cop and they don't want to do anything. That poor cop down in, in Alabama, he got beat up. The guy was dancing around him, saying, I put you to sleep. You want some cookies and meat, milk as he's dancing around the cops pleading. And the other people were taking selfies with the cop laying on the floor. This is the atmosphere that's out there. This is hard for me to watch when I see these kind of cops out there trying to do their job, and all you do, you second-guess them. Deborah, when you talk about the, uh, the poverty... Uh, chronic poverty over decades in some cases. 
We have, this isn't 1960. Uh, we're talking about, for example, and let's use uh, uh, Baltimore as an example, where you've got a city run by African Americans. The community that is in the greatest distress is the African American community. And we're not seeing a positive result from their leadership, the power that they control and, and, and display, uh, which should be positive. It's not. So what do we do in the first instance to protect law enforcement and to protect the community? Well, I think to answer your second question first, to protect the community, you have these young boys. Many of them are very smart, but they grow up in a dangerous neighborhood. They have very hardworking moms, but they're they're in a very dangerous neighborhood, so they carry a gun or they join a gang. And that leads to them being arrested. And one of their friends will tell on them and say he has a gun because that friend will get a reduced sentence. No, so you see these young boys but, but who are very have, intelligent. Okay, I, I, I'm familiar with the, the characteristics of the community as our, as our audience. What I'm asking you is what is the policy response and how do we protect the community and the officers? Because in, in the most recent survey, most, about 90% of the community wants either the same level or a greater level of police protection, and it's being pushed away. Well, I think that our government and our leaders in the cities need to come out and unify with the police, and they need to have new training on how to react based on the current circumstances. There's no way to train Lou, to, to get, Lou, to get Lou, a Lou. pistol whipping. Uh, well, Bo, they, Lou, this is, Lou, this is important, Lou. This yeah. is very important. We all hear black lives count. What about on the 4th of July weekend? 15 dead, 65 shot in Chicago. Where was our president? Where was our black leaders? We don't hear nothing from them. Why aren't they out in these communities, in our black communities, trying to get to these kids and, and, and have an inference back and forth and educate kids? I'd like the cops to go because into schools. Because they lose their right talk. to, no, no, to no. succeed where are, where in are the, the they leaders? They where is Obama? And felony excuse me. Well, excuse me. To, where, excuse me. Where is Obama? Well, thank you very much, Deborah. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. It.